Rethinking Assessment. Let's think back to what we know about learning, that it's an active, interactive process, that in order to learn, students need to make real-world connections with the course content and use what they know in a meaningful way, like in this video clip from the 40s where kids are generating content relevant to their needs. So then, how do we assess student learning? It's not like we can access the inside of a student's mind and see what they have learned. Or can we? Are there doors we can open that give us insight into what a student has learned in our classes? Is there a way we can get a fuller picture of what students take away from our courses? Traditional assessment, the little red schoolhouse. Before there were standardized tests, there was rote memorization. Student assessment rested in being able to recall and recite information. Good students could memorize content well. Teachers dictated, students wrote. Accuracy was the key to success. Colleges and universities favored open-ended assessments, like essay tests. Think Socratic methods, debates, critiques. With the advent of compulsory education, however, came the need to evaluate larger populations of students consistently, reliably. This gave rise to the standardized tests that we've become so familiar with, specifically multiple choice exams. Student evaluation was no longer based on what an individual student was able to produce, but rather on how they were able to perform on a specific test-taking instance, and usually in relation to other students. These norm reference tests, like the percentile we're all familiar with in Bell's Curve, continue to shape what we do in a variety of educational settings. Objective tests, multiple choice, fill-ins, true-false, short answers, however, yield little real information about what students have learned. Think back to a time when you've had to take one of these tests. What did you do before you took the test? Maybe you sat down and studiously reviewed all the course materials. You might have made flashcards and quizzed yourself. But, on the other hand, you could have crammed the night before. Or maybe you just gave up and guessed really well. At any rate, you're probably able to remember what you studied. But the real question is, were you able to demonstrate learning? Or were you just randomly filling in bubbles? The rise of formative assessment. Most of us are familiar with Bloom's taxonomy. While it's a very basic classification of learning, it provides us with a way to talk about skills we use in learning. Instead of a one-off instance with pen and paper, learning is a deeper process that involves higher order skills. Objective tests assess how well students are able to remember knowledge, but don't really allow students to demonstrate what they are able to do with that knowledge, like analyzing, applying, evaluating, and creating, otherwise known as authentic assessment. Instead of a summative process, where content plus assessment equals a final grade, assessment involves forming a picture of student learning, aka formative assessment. Student journals or discussion posts are an example of this type of assessment. Assessment is a cycle. Learning is a process. So what do we do in our classes? Are these two basic types of assessment mutually exclusive? No. Ideally, assessment should be integrated, that is, should utilize formative elements that can result in a final grade. That grade, though, is not a singular instance of a student's performance. Like writers who go through a series of drafts before they wind up with a final product, student learning is seen over a period of time. Growth, development, change are integral to the assessment process and should therefore be reflected in a student's grade. Does this mean we should throw away paper-based tests? Not necessarily, but it does mean that we should first rethink how we structure our courses and then how we look at student learning. Creating smaller, lower stakes tasks that scaffold the steps that lead to a larger project will provide our students with learning opportunities that have real-world applications. Projects, simulations, case studies are all examples of these sorts of what we call authentic assessments that gives students the chance to demonstrate and contextualize what they can do. E-portfolios are ways for students to appraise their own learning, self-evaluation, through reflection and goal setting. Building our courses around authentic and integrated assessments through which our students can explore the skills and content we want them to develop allows the learning that is happening with our students to percolate deeper. 
students form connections with the content in new and thought-provoking ways. When we start thinking in this way, we then come to realize that true learning becomes a process of realizations and discovery, that our assessments should be a window through which we are able to glimpse into this process.